The Saint and the White Wolf, Part 1 Long, long ago, in an era when mankind was divided by conflict into west and east, there lived a very kind girl in a certain town. The girl ardently treated those wounded in battle or ravaged by disease, gaining the admiration of everyone in town. Except for the ruling lord, who cared little for the girl who nursed even enemy mercenaries back to health. One day, the lord summoned a guardian knight. Have that pesky maiden slaughtered. The lord had had enough. He wanted the girl eliminated. The girl lived alone in a house on a cliff above the sea. Knowing this, the guardian knight headed toward the house to carry out the deed. His plan was to attack her from behind after it had gotten dark. No one would suspect a thing. He hid in the forest near the house and waited. That night, the girl emerged from her house to draw water from the well. As the knight left his hiding spot, he heard a howl. A white wolf had appeared before him. The white wolf stared at the knight with red eyes. It was as if it was there to protect the girl. The knight promptly tried to escape, but his feet slipped. He then tumbled down the cliff. When he came to, he found himself on a simple bed. Idly looking around, he saw the girl standing there in the kitchen. Noticing the bandages carefully wrapped around his body, he realized the girl had saved him. I am relieved you woke up, the girl said, serving the knight a bowl of warm soup. Receiving such kindness from someone he'd tried to kill caused the knight to feel deeply ashamed. He came clean and told the girl his lord had commanded him to kill her. The girl was a little surprised when she heard that, but soon smiled as though unfazed. Even still, I cannot just look away when a life granted by the goddess is in danger. The knight was moved by these words. For her to be so kind towards someone who might have killed her, she must be a daughter of the goddess. And he would have gone through with it if not for that white wolf. The thought sent a chill down his spine. He decided the white wolf must be a servant of the goddess, ordered to protect the girl. A few days later, when his body was fully healed, he thanked the girl, and it was now time to go back. He began to consider how he might convince his lord to change his mind. The girl joined him on his way to town to check upon her other patients. The knight pondered more. He asked the opinion of the girl. She did not seem to care about being disliked by people. As they approached the town, they noticed the town was dyed red like a sunset. But it was still noon. Finding it strange, the girl and the knight ventured forth to find out what was happening. What they found sent horrified gasps from their mouths. The town was dyed red not by the setting sun, but by the flames of war. Part 2 As the girl and the knight approached the flaming town, they were shocked. They hurried toward the conflict to check on the townsfolk. The town's church was crowded with casualties. The girl carefully checked on each and every victim. Her passion encouraged the wounded. The knight helped the girl by carrying fallen victims into the church. After she finished tending to everyone who was there, she noticed that the lord who had sent the knight was not present. Help me! A familiar voice was heard from outside the church. Without a doubt, it belonged to the lord. The moment she heard it, the girl bolted out of the church to where the battle still raged on. The knight hurriedly chased after her. They sped in the direction of the voice and found that the lord had fallen on his back, under attack by mercenaries of the invading nation. Disregarding the lord's pleas, one of the mercenaries raised his sword. The blade swiftly plunged straight down towards his helpless figure. He had but a moment left to live, when... The girl nimbly flung herself between the lord and the mercenary, and took the blow with her own body. It had all happened so quickly. The knight had been unable to stop her. Gravely wounded... The girl collapsed to the ground with a dull thud. The mercenary who had struck the girl was surprised, but quickly composed himself and pointed his blade toward the Lord once again. A beastly howl resounded throughout the area. The white wolf the knight saw by the girl's home had appeared with its pack. The mercenaries, struck with fear at the sight, retreated immediately. The Lord, the collapsed girl, and the pack of white wolves were all that remained. Paying the wolves no heed, the lord could not comprehend why the girl had saved him. 
The girl, still lying on the ground, smiled weakly at the Lord. Why would you save someone who wanted you dead? He blurted out. She replied in turn. You are of great importance to the good people here. What choice did I have but to save the leader of this town? The girl protected the Lord in consideration of the townsfolk, who suffered due to the battle. As the Lord grasped the kindness of the girl and pondered his own foolishness, the girl closed her eyes for the final time. The white wolves surrounding him howled, as if crying in grief, and then left. The knight shed tears when he saw the girl's lifeless body. Not long afterward, the bitter war finally came to an end. Touched by the girl's kindness, the Lord took over her will and established a facility known as a hospital, where the wounded and sick would be looked after. With the knight's help, the hospital would go on to save countless lives. The girl's name, Ursula, was passed down as the name of a saint dispatched by the goddess. The white wolves who protected her are said to still watch over the people of this land to this day.